Okay, welcome to our first spincast. This uh, topic for today is going to be the three-point geometry. This is in section 1.3, and the three-point geometry has four axioms. The first axiom says there exists exactly three points in the geometry. Axiom 2 says each two distinct points are on exactly one line. Axiom 3 says not all points in the geometry are on the same line. And Axiom 4 says each two distinct lines are on at least one point. Now, the first thing I want to bring to your attention is that there are three undefined terms in this geometry. Uh, our first undefined term is point, and our second undefined term is line, and our third undefined term, it's kind of hidden, is actually the word on. <clears throat> now these are things that the axioms give no indication of their meaning, we just sort of have to agree that we are going to treat these things um, <clears throat> as objects uh, in and of themselves. and just accept that there is no definition. Uh, and of course the, the convenient thing about the choice of points and line and in that context on uh, is that we already have a sense for what these could mean in Euclidean geometry and so we can just treat them as though they are the same thing. Okay, so this three-point geometry has these four axioms and the question is what, what does the three-point geometry look like? Now if we just go by the first axiom we know that there are three points and that's really all we know incorporate axiom 2. Axiom 2 says each two distinct points are on exactly one line. So combining that with axiom 1, we could have this sort of triangle thing. Here's a line that contains these two points. We could also have this line that contains these two points, and this line that contains these two points. <clears throat> now, it's this is a perfectly good model so far, but one thing that is not specifically ruled out yet is this idea that maybe there's one line that contains all three. So this line is the line that contains these two points, but it's also the line that contains these two points, and it's also the line that contains these two points. So uh, without any further information, we don't know which of these holds, um, although my money is on the one on the left, uh, mostly due to axiom three, which says not all points in the geometry are on the same line. So this says that this is not our model, or at least not a valid model. Okay, so we are left with this model right here. We have three points, we have a line here, we have a line here, we have a line here. <clears throat> now we do have this fourth axiom uh, that goes on to say each two distinct lines are on at least one point. So maybe, hmm, well, let's see, our model that we have so far so, uh, I think shows that this um, shows this to be the case in our model. This line and this line contain this point. This line and I guess these two lines and uh, contain this two, this point. And these two lines contain this point or are on those points. Okay, so we have a, a, a working picture. Okay, here's our model. Our model consists of three points and has three lines. <clears throat> And so when you're looking at a, when you're considering a, a, a finite geometry, you want to find a model that satisfies all of the axioms uh, and then use that model to find things, uh, statements to make about the geometry that you suspect might be true. Now you have to be careful um, because it could be that your model uh, happens to have some features that aren't inherent to the geometry. So when, you're, when you go to prove a statement about the geometry, you can draw your inspiration from the model, but you should not ever assume that just because it's true in the model, it's true in the geometry. Okay, so let's move on to our first theorem. Okay, axioms one through four are things that we're just going to agree are true. It's our definition of the three-point geometry. Uh, and theorem 1.1, we claim, is a statement that it, that must be true about the three-point geometry simply because these four axioms are assumed to be true. So theorem 1.1 says each two lines are on exactly one point. Now compare this to uh, axiom four, which says that each two distinct lines are on at least one point. Okay, so this is a stronger statement. So while axiom four says that each two distinct lines must meet on at least one point, uh, theorem 1.1 says that in fact there is exactly one point that uh, that is <clears throat> that is uh, in common with both of those lines. And of course this appears to be true in our model. This line and this line have exactly this one point in common. This line and this line have exactly this point in common. And of course this line and this line have exactly this point in common. But since uh, the model is not itself a proof, we need to rely on a formal proof involving these four axioms. So what's the big idea here? The idea is that since we are given that there are at least one, and we want to show exactly one, then we're going to show that greater than one is impossible. Okay, so suppose we have two lines, one, two, and they have more than one point in common. Hmm. 
Okay, so this line contains this point and this point, and this other line, say this is line one and line two. Line one and line two have two points in common. But this is actually a contradiction, because if we look way back up at, let's see, axiom two, Axiom 2 says each two distinct points are on exactly one line, but here, these two distinct points would have line 1 and line 2 uh, containing both of them. So if we assume that it is possible for greater than one point to be shared by two lines, then uh, we get a contradiction to axiom 2. Now since we all agreed in advance that axioms 1 through 4 are going to be the thing that defines our geometry, uh, we're kind of stuck. So it can't possibly be true, if these four axioms are agreed to be true, it can't possibly be true that more than one point of intersection, that there's more than one point of intersection between any two lines. Therefore, there must be exactly one point of intersection between any two lines. Okay. Now, here's your uh, first discussion topic. Okay. I want you to write your own summary, or write in your own words, uh, a summary of the proof of theorem 1.2. Uh, if you're looking at an old version of the book, I'm not entirely certain if this is actually theorem 1.2, so see above first statement. And if your book has this as theorem 1.3 or some something strange like that, I want you to summarize the proof of this statement, regardless of the name or number of the theorem. All right, I look forward to your responses, and I... Uh, well, I look forward to your responses.